Yeah. Okay, well, here we are <laughs> at this fine hotel in Solihull for the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame. We're going to be speaking to a new inductee who's um, extremely proud, no doubt, but we'll talk to this gentleman in a minute. But his name is Dave Lee Travis. For those of you who don't know Dave Lee Travis, I will be worried, okay? This man has been a legend in his own lunchtime on Radio 1 and various other radio stations right the way across the UK and also British Forces Broadcasting as well. He's a bit of a legend, okay? So, David Lee Travis, a very good evening to you, sir. Uh, good evening to you as well. I like, I like the leg end bit. It's good. Um, <laughs> it's not true, but I'll accept that, yes. I would say it's absolutely true. Um, yeah. From going back many, many years when my, when my parents used to tune into Radio 1 um, and, and we used to listen to you um, on the radio and I used to tune in to you when I was driving home from work back in the day um, with the snooker and everything else you did. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, and one of the proudest moments, I've got to say for myself, was the day that you retired on Radio 1 yourself. Because, quite frankly, the way that it went there was wrong. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you did that, and when you resigned, I thought that was fantastic, because it well, needed to yeah. be said. Um, well, that's a personal thing. I mean, I, I just, I've always felt that, that if you feel strongly enough about something, you've, you've got to deal with the people that are important first and the yeah. people to me that were most important were the audience yeah. that's why I didn't want to sort of announce I mean remember this wasn't pl- this wasn't planned I didn't sort of sit back a week before and think hmm I think I'll go on air and resign <laughs> no, no, no. Um, it really was a case of um, I wanted the listeners to hear it from me directly yeah. so that they would hear exactly what I felt yes rather than um, a, a newspaper picking it up making their own story and yeah. blah 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 yeah. so it was just one of those things I felt the need was there the only thing I remember controlling it with was the fact that I I recall that I said to myself just before I opened my mouth um, I'm not going to go for for long this has got a maximum of a minute which it was Um, and and a lot was timed a lot more was timed in them days wasn't it you're timed now on what you do on your station magic now but a lot more was specifically timed on Radio 1 so you needed to pick your moment didn't you um, yeah, it wasn't actually as tight as you might have thought. You know, in the old days, we could we could fiddle around a bit with the timing. Yeah, it was okay. I mean, on on magic now, I'm you know, it's just fantastic I, because I'm I insisted that I would choose all the music uh, before I signed the contract, which was a bit sort of strange for people. They're so used to having. My problem is there's so many people that have got in stations. They may have a 30 year old who's putting the music together, and with respect. <laughs> He hasn't yeah, got yeah. the background. He no. doesn't know the stuff like I do, and no. therefore, mm. I kept every time I, this, this happened, I uh, I got messed up, and I, it really bugged me. So this time, I said, "Look, trust me. I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. I'll pick the music, and I'll do your show." And fortunately, when I stick, stuck on magic, I mean, we doubled the audience for a start yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. in a few weeks. So that, that comes under the Ray Jars um, sort yes. of. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Excellent. Now then, let's talk about uh, your racing days. Ah. How did you originally get involved with um, drag racing, really? Well, I think it's because I've always had, um, and by the way, listeners, if you hear the odd gap here and there, it's, it's not bad editing. It's me trying to pick the nuts out of my teeth <laughs> while I'm talking. Because um, I've, been, I've been eating nuts here while, whilst talking. Um, no, basically, I was always in love with American cars, old cars in general as well. And it was logical, um, after sort of being uh, hanging out with the hot rod crowd and things, that, that I would want to see what drag racing was all about. And then, of course, I couldn't just see what it was about. I had to know what it was about, so I had to take part in it. So I started driving and ended up doing 220 miles an hour in six seconds. And I thought, oh, hello, that's quite quick. I won't be calling the date when that was. But um, um, for you, that was a personal best, wasn't it, Uh, uh, on the track? Yeah, Yeah, it was 220 miles an hour in six and a half seconds, six or 6.6 or something. 6.6, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean... uh, it's an amazing feel feeling. Feel a lot of people say that because when when they say "oh, drag racing," I've, I've you know, if they don't really, if they've not really got into it and they've seen the occasional thing from the states or whatever, 
um, they're not entirely sure what it's all about. They know it's quick. And when I tell them that, you know, you, you from a standing start, you do naught to 100 at my time in one and a half seconds, they go, no, because they're thinking of their escorts. And it doesn't work the same. But, yeah, it's an astonishing uh, feeling at that speed. 100 foot per 100 mile, isn't it? So oh, I, I tell you, the last time I went to the pod, I, I couldn't believe it. And the, the feeling... That you, that you get um, almost yeah I mean I was just listening to some of the, the top fuelers going past and I thought my, all my organs were moving I, I mean I think I think actually they were they were there was a lot of jittering about in the stomach god it's loud yeah because now they're pulling what they call like uh, for like red arrow pilots they're pulling like minus five on the start line when they're pulling off yeah. and a reverse oh sorry it's, it's plus five on the on the launch and minus five on the turn off at the top end so you must have been pretty close to that in your day when you was doing it oh yeah i mean even even though it's uh, whatever 30 years ago or whatever that since i drove a, a top fueler they've increased but not physically that much in terms of speed and what have you but there's certainly a lot quicker a lot louder a lot ooh, more hairy yeah, i think yeah, 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 definitely. who was your um, biggest competitor i never had any competitors i think probably ros prior Ros prior yeah because she she talked a blinder yeah. she used to chat me up in the pits and say you've got no <laughs> bloody chance you know things like that and uh, but then i remember seeing her you know blow up once yeah, yeah, <laughs> not yeah. not her her car her car i yeah. seem i seem to recall seeing a blower going up in the air about 50 feet right you went um, straight past her uh, well of course <laughs> what, what are you going to do that's one of those occasions when you're sat in a dragster you don't stop to help a lady no, no, no. <laughs> Every other time yeah. I would. So the, the, the likes of Dennis Priddle and all that, they were around at the time oh, and God, all yes. that, yeah. They were all there. And, of course, Pete Crane, yeah. uh, who very kindly looked after me, because, I mean, there he's a, he was a record-breaker himself. You know, yeah. the first he was the first five-second man, wasn't yes, he, he was, in, yeah. in Britain? Uh, and a tremendous guy, and I'll, I'll always love him for that, because, you know, he, he was a very um, competent, good exciting driver and for him to sort of put that to one side to help me yeah. i thought was very generous of him yeah, and I, so i'll always i'll always love him for that yeah your first car was that the tender strap um no i think it was um i can't remember exactly i think it was a leadster car um mm, hey, and there's the man what was the first the very first car that i drove wasn't it from the leadster man John Ledster's Mustang. The Mustang, yeah. You drove um, Dennis Martin's Torino. Did I? Yes. I bought. I, I drove a Torino as well, apparently. Yeah. Oh, hang on. The microphone Brian, stands moved. This is Brian um, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> this is Brian Taylor, who's a very important part of all drag racing all over the place. Right. That's a good description for Brian Taylor. All over the place. All over the place, yeah. <laughs> You normally Thank catch you. him walking up and down the, the seafront now. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Collecting shells. <laughs> See if you can hear a sound of a dragster in it. <laughs> Trying to introduce Zimmer Frame Racing. Zimmer Frame Racing is the next big thing. Yes. It is the next so, big um, thing. So, when, anyway, Tender Trap came on, and that, so that was more competitive for you. Yes, it was. And that was with the Stones. Yeah. Uh, and, again, they were a great fantastic team. Fantastic family. Yeah. Um, they looked after me really well, and, and that was fast. That was naught to 60 in, in two seconds or something, which wasn't slow. But the move from that to the top fueler was a massive yeah, did, jump. Um, when did, whose car was that, or was it Radio 1 that sponsored no, you? No, it wasn't Radio 1. They had nothing to do with it. It was, it was all down to uh, the pod. It, they, they sort of built the car up from various other cars. So boy, and the body, yeah. yeah um, the, the body was put on it. I remember everybody commenting because the body was totally unlike anyone before it sort of looked um, it, it, I can't describe it but if you think of a dragster nowadays with the narrow body suddenly you had a piece that swept out on either side almost like a mudguard but it was it, it was all down to trying to get me comfortable I wanted to be in a situation where I could get out quickly, that's the truth. Yeah, absolutely. You have in those days the safety checks where you need to get out of it quickly. And, and no, no, we don't. Never had any safety checks. It, but but uh, you know, with the five-way harness, 
and 2,000 horsepower and a helmet on and God knows what else, you want to know that if there's an emergency, you can get out. See, now, from Kaz's point of view, 2,000 horsepower top fuel, we're now 8,000 horsepower. That's a huge difference. It's mental. It's 8,000 now. Are you serious? I'm serious. I didn't realise. No, no wonder my organs were moving. Seven to, seven to eight thousand horsepower is what we've got now. Oh, wow, that is something else, isn't it? Yeah. So um, now, even the funny cars are seven to eight thousand. Oh wow! So okay. there we are. So what it's does changed. this? What does this mean to you, David? Uh, what you mean? You mean this? This award? This award yeah. it, well, it's fantastic mm. um, because even though. I'm, I'm not stupid. I know that at the time I was doing this, that, and of course pushing it on Radio 1 as well, it was helping the sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't mind helping the sport because they were helping me as well. Yeah. So I think it was a win-win for everybody. Um, I, I just uh, enjoyed it immensely. I did, as a matter of interest, which might amuse you, um, at one time worked out the insurance costs for me to drag race. Yeah. Huge. And um, I worked out how much I was paying and how much time I was sat in the car with the engine running. So that included the race and the run up, you know, the fire up road, and that's it. And it cost me £17 per second. And that was in the 70s. That's, that's how much it worked out to. Yes. Ridiculous when you think of it that way. Seventeen pounds a week for Radio One. Absolutely. Yeah. So it was a bit of a costly uh, mistake, really. No, nah, yeah. it, it was fabulous. I, I mean, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. No, no, no. And the nice thing is that it's like now. It's since since I've been racing, I've I've had a few classic cars. And when I deal with people who've got, I'll deal for another classic car. You know, you can shake hands with them, yeah. and you know that they won't let you down. No. There's something about people being together in a love of, of the motorsport. We all petrol heads are all over the place, and you know, either you're in it for the speed, or you're in it for the excitement, or you're in it for the the sheer joy of seeing how somebody can rebuild an engine over a lunch hour. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just great, and and I think all the guys and the women that I've met during drag racing have just been superb characters and I love them for that yeah absolutely so you um, oh no and the original question was how do I feel about yes. what? which we went right off there didn't we yeah, no I, I do think that that is astonishing because even though um, it was a, a two way thing for all of us I, I think it's very kind of them to, to uh, think of me in that way but then I suppose being the only DJ who's ever done 220 miles an hour in, in a dragster maybe that's uh, and I suppose for helping support the yeah, sport. You also took the Radio 1 Roadshow to Sandspot as well. Oh, yeah, that was fun. That was, that was funny. Didn't that increase the gates on the day? I don't, I, I, I don't suppose it made a lot of difference. I don't know. I have no idea you whether it no did. Idea. Um, you know, the Radio 1 Roadshow was um, just one of those things that happened yeah. every week in different places, and, uh, and I talked the bosses into doing it from where I enjoyed myself most at the Which weekend. You could do so. it in them days. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You could actually talk to people then and yeah. suggest things. <laughs> yeah, well, we won't talk about the, uh, the likes of certain people, but um, so now um, this this um, this award to yourself. What the, um, will you be coming back to Centre Pod again? I'm sure I'll be coming back to the pod, and I'm equally sure I will not be getting into a dragster. <laughs> okay, that that much I can tell you for sure. Yeah, you yeah, I'm suffering. I'm only what? Forty-six now, surely. Forty-six. <laughs> I wish. I wish. No, I'm. Um, you know, I'm right up there now. I'm sixty-six, for God's sake. Yeah. Are you astonished by that? I love you for it. No, no, no. Um, point being that that there was a right time to be doing that, and you know, now is not the time. Maybe you can come up there and ride your push bike up and down the track. No, those. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those are the memories. No, I'll definitely come and see you when I come up there for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it was nice to see you there before, mm. and we did some, we had a chat, and you did some um, voiceovers for me, which was fantastic. And, uh, no, no, and this is on digital. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, a pleasure. Yeah, nice. um, but it's really brilliant. Well, congratulations on your award because you do Thank deserve you. it no, for all the hard work you put in back in the seventies. Oh, yeah. the seventies. Yeah, the seventies. Yeah. 
I was young, yes, yes. It, it, I've just it, been it, reminded it, it by the missus. Apart from I was hair. young, <laughs> apart, from, oh, apart from the hair and a new knee, <laughs> bad oh, back. Got a new knee, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm bionic, mate. Now, <laughs> hey. I'm just talking to David Lee Chavis's lady here. Can you be gentle with him, please? <laughs> she doesn't have to be gentle with him. <laughs> she's, she's my rock. <laughs> she was there all the time while I was racing. Yeah, she was yeah, there yeah. pretending not to worry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. And especially, as I might as well end this, on the, um, the time when my chute didn't open. Oh. That was fun. Was that the field? Uh, it was. I nearly became the fastest farmer in Britain. Yeah. Um, that, as you know, yeah, I know. It was... Uh, one of those moments, I was doing about 200 on this particular run, and uh, for yeah, I've got the brake lever there ready to release, and of course I'm bracing myself because, as we know, by hitting the the the, the shoot, you're actually cutting yourself down instantly by 100 miles an hour, and it's quite a jolt. So I, I braced myself, pulled the lever, and I thought, no jolt. I'm heading for the end of the uh, of the strip, and I'm still doing 200 miles an hour. So I've got my foot on the brake and, and my, well, the handbrake in in my hand, and um, I'm just going mental trying to stop it. And I literally, it was like a film. It was stopped two yards from the end of the oh, right. concrete, and uh, I just saw those puffs of smoke in in the mirrors. So I got out quick, just yeah, in time. Mirrors in them days. Mirrors, yeah. Who the hell wants to see what's going on behind you? Uh, but then the, 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 the wheels burst into flames as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, from the heat. Yeah. So, no flame burner, but the wrong end. Uh, absolutely. I, did, I didn't want to be there when it happened, but no. I was. No, it was but great fun. And, but yeah, but yeah. and lovely chatting to you again. Yeah. Thank you for the no, time. Thank you very much indeed. And we'll yeah. see you again soon. And can you tell me where you get these microphone stands from? Because I'd like to get one for myself. Uh, this one comes from Windsor. Yeah. It's oh, a posh a microphone stand. Yeah, yes. It's a posh, posh stand. Um, available for hire. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, at any time you feel like, all you have to do is get in touch with us at night for event, and we'll hire this lady out to you. Right. Just a word. Thank you for your uh, for your posture. Say something. Thank you. <laughs> the talking microphone stand. It'll be all the rage next year. Thank you very much. Cheers. Brilliant. Thank you.